Adam Cole, baby! Hi guys, Brighton Scare Lion back with another video. And for those of you who don't know, tonight was NXT TakeOver 25. I've literally just finished the event and I thought, you know what, let's get this recording done because it was a fucking brilliant night of wrestling. Uh, I wouldn't say it's literally the best takeover that there was, but it was a really, really, really good takeover. Never fucking disappoints. And, well, that man right there is very happy. We'll get to why soon enough. But, aye, with that being said, here's what happened at NXT TakeOver 25. Now, the first match that we started out with was Roderick Strong versus Matt Riddle. This match wasn't set to be one of the best matches on the card, but it did end up being one of the top fucking matches of the night. Literally because Roderick Strong, Jesus Christ, he pulled it out of the fucking bag. Like, we usually see a great match for, for Matt Riddle. We usually see a great match for Roderick Strong. But, I, uh, I, I did not expect what we actually got for Roderick. One of the best points during the match um, was when Matt Riddle was up against the ropes and Roderick Strong's just bouncing from rope to rope, hitting fucking Matt Riddle with his elbows, wasn't it? Uh, he just kept fucking whacking him with his elbows. It was brilliant. We saw him evading the uh, bro mission a few times. Uh, we got to see some of the best moves, like uh, the bro ton and everything. It was absolutely brilliant. But we did end up seeing Matt Riddle walking away with a victory on this. After hitting this, he, he set it up like a fucking uh, tombstone, then dropped forward into uh, like this. It, it sort of looked like an original version of a Styles Clash, just done fucking brilliantly. Uh, Taking nothing away from either of the men in this match, it was a fucking brilliant match. Absolutely loved it, and a great way to start the show. So the next match on the card was for the NXT Tag Team Championships and it was a four-way fatal ladder match. Uh, the four teams in this match were the Undisputed Era, the Street Profits, the Forgotten Sons and Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan. Again, this was another match that was fucking brilliant from start to finish. It almost made match of the night for me. Uh, we'll get to actual match of the night. But, I it almost made match of the night for me on this. We saw a lot of great spots from... Everybody involved in this match. Um, Kyle O'Reilly. Jesus Christ, his back took a battering. Like a severe battering during this. I wouldn't say it exactly like Finn Balor. I think Finn, Balor t Finn Balor's back took a lot more punishment. But it was just below that. Like it, it took, His back took a lot of punishment. You could see the, welt, the welts and everything on his back. One of the things that I loved with this was Cutler and Blake actually came out to the ring on the rain and left Riker at the back. It did have us questioning, like, uh, they just got to keep Riker away. But Riker ended up showing up halfway through the match. I feel like it's better to have him showing up halfway through the match than having him actually come out during the entrance because it made that much more of an impact. Riker just fucking lost it and just started smashing every motherfucker in, it, in this match. But everybody ended up getting their own back and they teamed up together to take out Riker. Riker looked fucking dominant. So it, it was one of them. It would have took everybody to actually take him out of this. They were hitting him repeatedly with a fucking ladder. Uh, he ended up on the outside of the ring and every time anything was happening, they were just fucking pouncing on Riker. I, I loved the way Riker played into this. It was fucking brilliant. Uh, the only thing that would have made this match a little bit better for me was if they actually had Riker involved in the match from the get-go. I mean, don't get me wrong, I loved having them coming out and just destroying everybody for that little brief period. But, I, I just feel like Riker should have been the one in this match. Blake and Riker. If you don't agree, you don't agree. Like, I'm, I'm not here to push my opinions on these. But, I, that's the way it felt for me. Towards the end of the match, we saw the Forgotten Sons actually almost get in the championships. But uh, Dawkins comes in, takes out one of them, and uh, then Ford Ford just pounces onto the fucking ladder out of nowhere, takes out the other member of the Forgotten Sons, and takes the fucking championships. Great ending, and 
I, I can't wait to see where we go with the Street Profits as the champions. Hopefully we can set up some big matches in the future. We might even get to see a little bit merry, a rivalry pushing forward with the Forgotten Sons and uh, the Street Profits. I know we've started to see something, but we might actually get to see a little bit more. I cannot wait. After that, we go on to the North American Championship match. This was between the Velveteen Dream and Prince Pretty, Tyler Breeze. For me, I expected this to be match of the night. It wasn't, but don't take anything away from the two men that were involved. The only reason this wasn't match of the night is because there were two matches that were just better. Like, these two were absolutely great against each other. Everything felt great in this match, from the actual in-ring competing, to them playing on their egos, to them actually trying to get inside each other's heads. Like, it all, it all just fit together and it put on for not just a great night of competing in this match, but also great storytelling between two of the best that NXT has to offer. I think the best spot in this match actually has to go to Dream, hitting that fucking unpretty or out of nowhere. Uh, it was just one, it's one of the things that make you fucking laugh while feeling brilliant at the same time that you just saw something like this. Honestly, I would love to say that this was my match of the night because it was absolutely fucking fantastic. But there were two matches that were just better. Now we did end up seeing Dream walking away with a victory on this after hitting the Dream Valley Driver and then hitting the Purple Rainmaker uh, and getting the one two three. I feel like it's, a, uh, you can't really have a bad decision in this. It would have been great to see uh, Prince Pretty walking away with the championship, just to give him that little bit merry a boost, but it's Dream. He's fucking outstanding in the ring, and to actually see him gone forward with this championship, and like Thomas said in the predictions, uh, the championship has been moved around a lot. It's nice to see it on somebody kept there for at least a little while. So I definitely can't argue with the results on this. Unfortunately, I don't know what it means for Breeze. Where's it going to go for here? I mean, I don't see them pushing him to the side and just leaving him there. I see them actually trying to do something with him. But what they're actually going to do with him, yet to be seen. I can't even think of what they would do with him. Unless they put them like we're a team. Who knows? Let's just see. From there, we moved on to the NXT Women's Championship. This was between Io Shirai and Shayna Baszler. Now, the match itself was absolutely fantastic. But what happened after... Now, there's the fucking brilliant part. I absolutely loved it. But for now, let's talk about the match itself. We got to see some great back and forth between both of these, really. Io Shirai actually... Being the, pretty much the dominant one from the start of the match. But then once Baszler took over, I, it was kind of hard to see a comeback for Io. But she did slightly come back a little bit. She did actually really take it to Shayna Baszler. I think the big key factor was Baszler destroying both arms on Io Shirai with a reality check. I mean, that reality check, you always cringe when watching it because it looks so fucking real. It looks like she's actually snapping somebody's arm, like shoulders out of their sockets or actually snapping their arms. Another great moment during this match that I absolutely loved was when Marina Schaefer and Jessamine Duke came down to the ring, but then Candice LeRae ran out with a fucking kendo stick and twatted the pair of them. Like, I, I feel like it was a great play. Because whenever you see a Shayna Baszler match, you're expecting Jessamine Duke and Marina Schaefer to show up to try to gee Baszler the edge. Even though, does she need it? <laughs> does she actually need it as Baszler? She's fucking dominant. But I having Candice LeRae getting involved and just gone mental with the fucking kendo stick was brilliant. We did end up seeing Baszler taking the victory after locking in the Carafuda clutch. And Io Shirai... <laughs> Actually, almost reaching the fucking ropes, like, so, so close. But she's fading, she's fading, she's fading, until she had to eventually tap it out. Now, what happened after the match it was fucking brilliant. Io Shirai just snapped. Just destroyed Shayna Baszler. First gone after her with a fucking uh, kendo stick, then hitting that moonsault. 
and then coming back in and hitting the moonsault again, this time with a fucking chair. She absolutely destroyed Baszler. This, it looks like this isn't at the end of the story between them. And do you know what? I can't wait to see what comes next. I'm hoping for maybe a no disqualification or like extreme rules sort of match. It'd be fucking brilliant. I cannot wait to see where they go. Now, last but not least, certainly not least, we move on to the main event. Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole. We knew it was we knew this was going to be a great match. Like, we didn't know how great because going into it, we found out that Johnny Gargano had been injured and had to kind of take it easy on like the past few NXTs. So we weren't sure just how that was going to play in here. But this match was fucking incredible. And I will go as far as to say it was better than the last match. I know a lot of people might disagree, but I, when it comes to the sheer storytelling in the match, when it comes to the actual in-ring co like competition, it was it was fucking brilliant. Um, we literally started it out with Adam Cole coming out with Josiah Williams. If you don't know who Josiah Williams is, uh, he does the wrestling flow on YouTube. Uh, he's he, takes other people's like entrance music and raps over them he's fucking brilliant honestly go and check out go and check out his page uh josiah williams i put a link in the fucking description to this the guy is the guy is brilliant and i he came up with adam cole and did the undisputed era rap that he's got on his channel it was a fucking brilliant moment i absolutely loved it i'm singing along to it and everything but I, th that was just literally the start to it. I'm already fucking happy, literally at the start of the match. The in-ring action was fucking brilliant. We got to see them doing it again where they uh, used each other's finishers. I, I always love when wrestlers do that. It's that little, that little push of like, do you know what, I can do it better than you. <laughs> I always love it. It's like proper teasing your opponent. We saw uh, both superstars reading each other so well, going for moves and then holding back because they know the other person's reading it. Like, each little bit of that was just fucking brilliant. I was on the edge of my seat for this whole match. Honestly, if you haven't watched TakeOver yet, go and watch it. Honestly, go and watch it, especially just for this match. This match will keep you on the edge of your seat the whole fucking time. We saw a nice little spot where um, the referee had been knocked out, he'd been taken out by Johnny Gargano by accident, and uh, they got a chair involved, and they ended up not even really doing anything with the chair, but Adam Cole's in the ring, and he starts shouting for uh, the rest of Undisputed Era to come out, and Johnny's there, he's stunning with the chair, he's ready for them, but nobody comes out, and they played it so well to the advantage of uh, Adam Cole actually getting the better of Johnny as he came back into the ring. Literally the best spot from all of this, the best move in this fall match had to be that Panama Sunrise on the outside of the ring. It just looked devastating. We ended up having uh, Adam Cole winning this match in fucking brilliant fashion. He hit the Panama Sunrise in the ring and then hit that last shot, the fucking knee to the back of the head. It was fucking brilliant it got the one two three the fans started going mental for it and i can understand like if you're a johnny gargano fan like well i am i can understand anybody getting upset about the fact that he hasn't really had a long run but let's be honest the moment of johnny gargano winning the championship was the thing that we all wanted to see just the moment of him winning that match and it was a fucking amazing match. It was an amazing match. That's what we wanted. Unfortunately, I don't know where it, what it means for Johnny Gargano. I don't know if it means we're going to see him moved up to, well, moved over to like Raw or SmackDown. I kind of hope not because Vince doesn't have the best track record with NXT superstars. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I can definitely tell you one person right now who's happy 
about this. Thomas? Would you like to tell everybody how you feel right now? I feel fucking ecstatic. I have never heard Thomas shout louder than he did when Adam Cole picked up the fucking victory. But I, there you go, there's everything that happened at NXT TakeOver. Um, I was the one that lost, so I'll be doing the mousetraps to the thumbs. Uh, we'll be doing that later on this week. Not sure as to exactly what day, but it will be up later this week. But aye, that was a fucking, it was a great night of wrestling. I am leaving, like, this night so, so fucking happy. I'm going to bed happy. Uh, and I, I hope you guys enjoyed TakeOver if you watched it. If you didn't, go and fucking watch it. Even though I've told you the results, go and watch it because the fucking action in each of the matches was just that good. And I, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if he's dead... Don't forget to butt fuck that like button. Peace.